So I thought I'd share a couple of examples of conflict resolution that I've had to deal with throughout my coaching journey, throughout my co with my coaching clients. I've worked with a number of teams where they've gone through big change programs. So we've had companies reorganizing on quite a large scale where different cultures are working together. So if you're going through that change, understanding each other's culture and reading up about it is very, very important. I work with people live across different countries and I always make sure I understand the culture and understand the different mannerisms and approaches I need to take when working with other people, other cultures. Um, I've also worked with teams where the manager has felt like he's helping people by absorbing their problems. And the person that I was working with was really at risk of burnout. And the problem was that whilst he thought he was helping people, being a great team leader by absorbing the problems and dealing with them all himself, he wasn't engaging anybody else in the team. He was just saying, yeah, 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 but nothing changed. There's nothing worse than change and nothing changes I think so that was part of the workshop to really button down what are the conflicts they were simple misunderstandings assumptions disc profiling that team all had the same disc profile disc profile disc profiling is a personality assessment tool that allows you to see your style at work how you communicate how you act under pressure so we did a whole exercise and a team grid of the different styles and we realized that they all had a very similar style you might think that's great they'd all get on very well but when there were fuzzy boundaries when there was a lack of onboarding for new team members when people didn't really have a clear role of where that person's role stopped and mine started there wasn't anybody else of a different style that could come in and intervene and really sort of dismantle the conflict so those are some good examples also within smaller organizations i've worked for family organizations where some people have felt the business needs to do something different and it's falling on deaf ears and actually that's where i can come in and help because i'm an independent party a coach or whoever you choose to work with a coach a mentor having someone to mediate or having someone to really talk you through and see things clearly because I'm not emotionally attached to the issues. We get very emotionally attached at work. Our sense of belonging sometimes is very attached to what we do at work. And sometimes we just need to put the ego aside, um, sort of clear the decks and be very open about the conflicts that are going on and be clear about role profiles. Look at all the team disc profiles and personalities and think about, is that person in the right role? Are we working together efficiently? Are we somehow butting heads and coming together in the wrong way when we're talking about things? So those are some of the examples of areas I've worked in where I've come in to help diagnose the conflict because sometimes it's also about, well, we know we're not performing, we're not getting on, but we don't know why. So sometimes that external clarity is a great help. If you'd like to learn more, then drop me a message.